thinking about where your grandchildren are, what's the most important consideration in choosing a place to retire? Well, first of all, there's something called the age-friendly retirement community. Uh, a lot of people don't know that the United Nations has actually designated certain cities all over the world as being age-friendly. So what does it mean to be age-friendly? And by the way, New York City, Portland, Oregon, and Nairobi are all age-friendly. Uh, New right? York's the greatest city it's the greatest. for older people. So what's right. it about? Number one, transportation, that you can get around. And if you can get around walking, wow, that's fantastic. The other is culture, uh, the arts. Uh, whether it's music, whether it's dance, but not just for you to be the spectator, which I love, but also to be a participant. What is there for you to do, not just to take and receive, but to contribute to your community? That's a big thing. Uh, is there a place for lifelong learning there? So interestingly enough, these things, and of course, can you afford it? How affordable is it? Uh, is uh, the first step. The second is healthcare. Healthcare is very important. What's the accessibility of healthcare to you in the area? And then comes things like everybody talks about the weather. I have people very happily uh, retired in Michigan, very happily retired in Alberta, Canada, mm -hmm. and others who went to Florida, and it's not for them. So don't go with the herd. Take a good look at what you love and go where you feel your expression can best be uh, um, integrated into what they have there. Uh, and do take a look at the AARP. The AARP has a wonderful website on what is an age-friendly community. It'll even tell you if your community is age-friendly. Interesting. Quick follow-up. Should somebody think about, like, I'll call it two phases of retirement. So there's the active phase when I'm very you know, busy, engaged, and my health is still quite good. And then possibly later on where I might need to be closer to family. So that, you know, go, go be active wherever you want to be, but then maybe have to go closer to family when your health starts failing? Actually, there are, there's more than two phases. There's several phases. Remember, uh, this is a very long period of time, and longevity is the watchword of the new retirement. So you have several phases. First of all, you're the semi-retirement, where you're kind of weaning yourself away from work, and you probably have to stay put. And that's what we sometimes call aging in place, all right? After that comes a real go-go years which are, is a new kind of transition phase where people now start to really travel. If they were uh, really planning, they might not even have a home. They would be spending a year or two abroad and doing everything that they always wanted to do. Then they finally pick where they're going to retire, and then they make their community, their friends, and so on. And then a time comes when we do face aging. I mean, my radio show is called The Fountain of Truth, not The Fountain of Youth. And we have to face the fact that there could be decline. Where do we want to be? We want to be in places that are very accessible to us, that are accessible, as you say, to family, that's accessible to health care. So there are many, many phases of retirement. It's dynamic. It's as dynamic a phase of life as any other phase of life. Good point. Thanks, Adrian. If you like what you just saw, we have many more videos with Adrian Berg and with more experts at BottomLineInc.com. And do me a favor. Do that social thing. Share it. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Come to BottomLineInc.com. Mm -hmm.